hello guys and welcome back uh, I have a tutorial for you guys uh, how to make your own very basic CSGO or Counter-Strike Global Offensive weapon finish I'll be probably this is the one that you would use for a um oh crap I forgot a I'm gonna call it a hydrographic and an anodized paintbrush and multicolored I think those are the ones that you can use this for and I'll probably do it in a later tutorial, a different one, so you can use for uh, spray paint and the last one, Panty or something. All right, so let's begin. So you're gonna see all these, all these skins like this on the uh, what is this? <laughs> the the workshop, right? Uh, they look pretty good. I'll probably find an example. Like this one is just solid color, very nice, very nice. The proton looks all right. Uh, there, no, not really. Okay trying to find a pretty ah this one desert camouflage so I'm going to be showing you how to make something like that so if you want like um urban d-pad or something like that I can also show you how to do this but I'll be doing um oh this is a custom paint job it's pretty it's pretty nice actually so I'll be showing you how to make something like this but before we start you're gonna need some of these you're gonna need NEMS tools or actually more like VTF edit 1.25 it's fine just download the installer and once you've downloaded that you're gonna have something like this VTF edit blah 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 so once you've downloaded just double click on it alright and you just wanna hit run and the user account control should pop up but you won't be able to see this unfortunately but you know it's alright just click yes you're gonna click next accept the agreement next 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 uh, if you want create a desktop icon don't need to and install you don't need to launch it either. Now, the other things you'll need is Photoshop and or Illustrator. Illustrator will is used to make those more complex kind of shapes. If you want like uh, octagons, hexagons, whatnot. Uh, the rest is just uh, if you just want like you know pixelate or whatever you may want. So I'm going to be showing you a urban D pad, so to speak, thing or disruption pattern. So what you want to do is open up Photoshop. The 32-bit one should be fine. We'll just let that load. All right. So once you've got this loaded, you're just gonna hit File, New. And then I think I have a so oh, no, I don't have a template. Okay, but it's already here. It's it's in the custom for some reason. So what you need to change is the width to 1024 and the height 1024. The resolution is 72 pixels per centimeter. Oh, and the rest of the pixels too. And the color mode is RGB, red, green, blue color at 8 bit, and the background contents will be white. Excellent. So if you want to like make this your living or something, just save the preset at CS:GO. And it should be up here. You get all these settings like that. The rest are fine. Name this whatever you want. You just click OK. So, oops, a doodles. Yeah, that look cherry red. You can. I'll put some of my work down at the bottom. More info. So now you got this uh background layer right. So you want to come over here to the swatches. If you don't have that, if you like at the color one, you just click on the black um square, and you just want to use the paint bucket tool, which is on the side here, and just click on it. That's your first layer. And then you're gonna put layer one. So the background is pretty much gonna be that one color where it's all over the gun. So the, your base color, pretty much. So layer one, I'm gonna do this. Uh, make it like a pixelated one, I guess. So this is what you want to do. You want to head over to layer one and choose red. So for this, I'd go over to the swatches and just use the eyedropper tool, or well, looks like that, and just click on the red square up here, and then just yep, yeah, uh, make the whole layer red. Then you want to go over to filter. And then render. You're gonna click on clouds. And then after that, you wanna go press. Why is it blue? Oh. Okay. Hold on. We'll do that again. Sorry. So you, I think you should set the background as black. Make sure you have that background color. So you just click on it and move it to black, and keep the one as red for this layer. So again, you wanna go to filter, render, clouds. Once you've done that, go to um, filter again, and then go down to um, pixelate, yeah, and then click mosaic. Now you get a preview of what it is. So 
I might suggest something like you. Oh, damn. Actually, no, it wasn't like that. Hold on. Give me one moment, please. Oh, yeah, sorry. You go to the filter gallery. Yeah, like this. And then you want to go down to... Just look through the ones that... I think it's stamp. Nope. Uh, it was a really pretty good one. It might be on, like, the store or something. Artistic... Yeah, like one of these, but it looked pretty damn good. Might have been. Okay, we'll just go with. What is this? Torn edges. Ah, uh, yeah. That's one, torn edges. So, with the. Uh, over here in the options, right, you got the image balance. So, the amount of black space you may want. And then you got the smoothness. If you want to have jagged or it's pretty smooth. I'd keep it at the smoothest possible so it's easier just to get rid of the color and the contrast you just set that so everything's red so just adjust this to the way you want and then OK and now you want to go to filter uh, pixelate and then mosaic uh, you can make them pretty big it makes it look better I think and that's it for one layer so now you want to go down here create another layer and then choose select the green from here and then paint bucket it then go to filter render clouds filter uh, filter gallery and you just leave it as the preset ones like that it's fine and now we're gonna go another layer make that blue careful to it's actually the darker blue rather than the lighter one so you just want to repeat the same process so you get a uh, render clouds filter filter gallery Okay, filter, pixelate, mosaic. Okay, so now, this is what you want to do with all of them. You can just like deselect those, except for the background. Now, what you want to do is select the black. Actually, you can go to image, um, adjustments, and then replace color. You should be able to do it with like, uh, basic color black with. Uh, adjustments. I wonder if you can remove a color. Oh well, maybe not. So what you want to do is just select all the black and delete it, like that. So you don't get. So it's just the blue, pretty much. So see how layer three. If you don't show the background, it's like that. So you just want to go through this for every single layer. Oh, I didn't do it for the green. I'll do that right now. <laughs> Whoopsie doodles. There we are. I guess it's not the same. Let me just undo all that then. Uh, mosaic. Alright. So, yeah, again, you just want to remove all the black that you kind of see around all this. Doesn't matter if it takes some of the green away, that's perfectly fine. Then you want to uncheck that, go back to layer 1, and, oh, click on layer 1, make sure layer 1 selected, and that's it. So once you get all these three, it kind of looks like that, it looks alright. Now, what you want to do is save as, and you want to select, um, here, okay, so you want to select that near the bottom, Targa, yep, Targa, TGA, you want to select that and just name it, uh, Disruption. Oh, okay, my camo. Make it generic. Save it somewhere where you can access it quite easily. Shh, Skype. Quit. Go away. Shh. No. All right. No mind. So, moving on. Just save it as a TGA format like that, and hit save. 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 And then in the options here. Yeah, whoops, in the options here, right, uh, just leave it as 24 bits per pixel. Uh, later on, I'll probably explain something like that if you want to put alpha on it. So, like, when it goes to minimal wear or, like, um, like battle scarred, you, some parts can stay there, which is, uh, which is pretty good. 
Alrighty, so. Okay, so uh, now what you want to do is open up, is open up VTF Edit, and then um yeah, once you got that open, like that, fit file import, and then go over to where you saved it, which is my documents. You open the TGA file that you save. In the case, it's my camo. You can leave all these settings like that. It's fine, and then hit save. And then you can see it's going to save as a VTF file. So we just save here with my camo. All right. Once you save that, then you're ready for Steam. So just open up your CS:GO. Alrighty. So once you got your um your CS:GO open, I had to re-record this. So you're going to have to enable the developer console. All you have to do is go to Options, Game Settings. Scroll down to enable developer console with the little squiggly key. Make sure you change that to a yes. Just hit escape and go back to the main menu. So you want to hit the title key or one below your escape key and above your tab. And of course next to number one, you want to type in workshop uh, underscore workbench. Hit enter on that and you should come up with this other screen like this. Just make that bigger by dragging the corner. Like that, yep. <laughs> so this is where you're gonna want to select what kind of, uh, how you're gonna apply the paint style to your weapon. So I'll be, you can use this for the hydrographic, uh, anodized airbrush, and yeah, those are the ones that work best with this kind of layout or setup. So I'm just gonna choose a gun, maybe the new one, the CZ75. So I'm just gonna inspect it like that, so you can see what I'm doing, or actually how it looks like, in fact. So I'm gonna select the hydrographic. So this is like the pool. Give me an example, like any patent gun that is not shiny, because the anodized uh, shiny ones. We'll just make that factory new. That oh, looks pretty good. And this one also covers all the components of the gun, so it's gonna be like throughout the whole thing. So now you want to choose the pattern. So you're gonna have to navigate to where you have saved it. In this case, it's in documents under my camo or VTF. So you're going to see how there's a little bit of line there and that's about it. I'm going to change the pattern scale up in this corner to maybe 5, depending on how much you want on it, so to speak, and change the rotation to the way you like it. So I'm just going to choose different colours, go for shades of blue. I think it's quite important to include like light ones and dark ones as well, as they give out like more of the colour like that. Uh, let's see, dark Something like this. So it'd look pretty awesome. So now let's try the um, anodized airbrush. You see, oh, it's not that shiny, and you can also already you can also already see that the uh, I forgot what this was called, the muzzle nostril straw thing isn't colored. The magazine is not colored. The grip is not colored, but the rest of the components are of the weapon. Now you can see there's a Fonge exponent, you can make that to 128, see there's still not that much shine in it, so you could change it to 64, it's very shiny. So yeah. So you can name this whatever you want, so once you've customized it to the way you want, all you have to do is go save as, and then find a place to save it, I'm just going to save it in my... In D CSGO, like make a folder it like C CSGO or something like that, so it's easy to navigate to. Let's save the TXT, which is this, the CZ75. Uh, pull ocean. Something like that, right? Shouldn't really matter. Then after that, you want to hit submit to upload to the workshop. Alright, so if you don't, uh, now this should pop up, right? But if you don't have this, uh, the uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive SDK, it will download it for you. After that, it will open this up. If not, if it doesn't work out like that, go back to CSGO and um, um, it click Submit again. Alright, now you're just going to give it a title. So the CZ75, was it 8? Okay, we'll just name it the CC75 because we can change all this later. Um, let's name it Ocean Disrupt. 
Eruption. All right. And the description: a pixelated, no, a disruptive pattern. And for the image preview, you might just want to select like a screenshot. Actually, I'll find it in the Steam thing because I had a picture of it. Yeah, that one. So it looked something like this. Show on disk. I'm just going to copy the path. It's actually in this other window here. So you're going to go back to the browse code with the little tick there and just paste that in. No paste? Okay. Steam user data. Steam. Steam. And then go to user data. There we go. 760 for the app ID. Remote 730. Screenshots, finally. And we want... It's a bit tedious, but usually you'd edit it in Photoshop. But this is just a quick tutorial. It's 2014, 002. What? 1213. Twelve thirteen. This one, zero zero two. So you can see it's up here now. Now the workbench text file. You just want to go to wherever you saved it. So it's in the CSGO TXT CC seventy five Ocean. The source image, the TGA file that we made in Photoshop, which is in my documents. Nope. And the VTF file format, which is also in documents. C uses so we documents my camera VTF check this the agreement and understand that you could get banned if it's not yours alrighty so it's gonna upload all the files together and you're gonna it's gonna open up your web browser yep load a picture you can hit finalize here and click OK and then you're going to have to finalize it again. Just like that. Alrighty. So that's it for this video tutorial on how to make your own, your very own CSGO skin. Hopefully they can be published to the workshop and, I don't know, made into the workshop so people can buy it and whatnot. Yep, so if you'd like to see more of these, hopefully I should be creating another one very soon. Give it a couple weeks. Um, Yes, just subscribe so you get notified when this happens, and so leave a like for this video if it helped you. Well, I hope to talk to you guys very soon again. Yeah, thanks.